1972, when they made their first World Series appearance against the Cincinnati Reds, the A's were minus Reggie Jackson and rated as real underdogs. Yet, Oakland toppled the big red machine in seven games with four one-run victories. Little did the baseball world know that Charlie Finley, Dick Williams, and company were on their way to becoming one of baseball history's greatest teams. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the mighty Oakland A's. And this is going to be very interesting. Joining us now is Nancy Finley. She's the daughter of Carl Finley, who was the former Oakland A's general manager and vice president of operations and cousin to Charlie Finley, uh, who was, you know, the owner of the club. And uh, they were like they were like brothers. And Nancy has written a great new book called Finley Ball, how two baseball outsiders turned the Oakland A's into a dynasty and changed the game forever. Nancy, welcome. Thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. First of all, I mean, I wish we had, you know, uh, five hours instead of five minutes because yeah. the, the Oakland A's, what a story. What, what, a, what, what a historical part of baseball. And Charlie Finley, I mean, and, and, and Carl Finley. I don't want to diminish mm -hmm. your dad at all. Um, the, the, what they did for baseball, the, they were always um, willing to, to do something different. And the, the bright uniforms, they would, Charlie wanted the orange baseball. And, and what's more important and most important is they won. They built a dynasty, yes. and they won. You were yes. a little girl when all this yes. started. You grew up with the A's. You grew up in the dugout with the A's. Mm -hmm. Talk about this. That's really what I thought life was. And uh, the front office, the uh, playing around in a stadium, just being able to go anywhere I wanted inside a stadium, and then the front office. I learned how... Uh, to do jobs people my age wouldn't do. Like I helped handle the World Ser Playoff World Series ticket sales uh, every summer, end of the summer before school started. We, ha we always did that in a secret location. We did not do it at the front office. And we would have our ticket manager send people over to help. We would never let an outsider do it. Right, right. Those were paper tickets then. Yeah, in the old days. <laughs> yes, right. But but I yeah but I, I want to talk you know I want to get to such some of the so many points in the book and, and so many as as a as a fan that that I'd love to get the inside scoop at and it's mm -hmm. all it's all in the book Finley Ball but for instance for, I remember when Vita Blue uh, was there a time when Charlie Finley offered Vita Blue money to change his name to True Blue? Well, he suggested nicknames a lot because they would come to him and he'd think some a name was was really good. Right like the Hollywood producers. And um, Vida, I, I, don't, I don't remember money being offered. Okay. I just remember Charlie said he thought it would be really, <laughs> really memorable. You know, people would remember it. And uh, Vida just didn't want to do it. Yeah, that, that always stuck out of my mind. The relationship between, between Charlie Finley and his players, and, and mm -hmm. the relationship between your dad and Charlie Finley, because I don't know anything about your dad uh, except what I read in the book. But, you know, they, Charlie was the face. Charlie was the front. Mm -hmm. Charlie was the owner. And he was the flamboyant one. And he was always getting into trouble. What role did your dad play in, I don't know, keeping him in check, if you well, will? Tell, dad had a master's in journalism, okay? And he'd, he'd, he'd been to law school. Dad was, try, dad tried to, to make things better. But often, Charlie would say something in an interview that he wasn't supposed to. And he'd always promised Dad he wouldn't do it again. <laughs> so they had their fights, and Dad quit several times. But they were a team. And, and, and Dad was the, the one that people came to here. Dad ran the team on site in Oakland. And people always went to Dad. And um, Dad was the calming force. And Dad didn't have the kind of ego that rubbed against Charlie. Right. Well, so thank God for that. Made yeah. such a good team. Thank God for that. You couldn't have you couldn't <laughs> have had two worked. of those personalities being the same. And, and we only have a little over a minute left. Mm -hmm. uh, we, 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 you can read all about the dynasty. Baseball fans out there know about the great Oakland A's and Reggie Jackson and Raleigh Fingers and Dennis. You know all these all these great people. But there came a point then when Charlie Finley wanted was was selling off his players. Well, he needed to because of free agency coming. He needed to. And that didn't sit well with the commissioner, of course. 
oh no, it didn't. The commissioner really didn't seem to like a lot of what we did. It did. It was, <laughs> yeah, buoy coon. Yeah. But but we rebuilt after that happened, and then that's that resulted in the '81 playoffs. Yeah. And Charlie had sold. So that that. That was the strike year, of course. And well, and if they'd had Charlie around, that may not have been a strike year because he was able to negotiate 71. Yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. Or by 72 when they, when they were threatening to strike. Nancy, it's, folks, it's a great book, Finley Ball. Thank you. About the, the, the dynasty of the Oakland A's, Charlie Finley, who I had the pleasure of sitting down and having dinner with at Rusty's uh, Rib Place up in, uh, in, uh, on the east side in Manhattan uh, back oh. in the 80s. Anyway, Nancy Finley, Finley Ball, read all about it. Thank you very much. Up next, uh, former senior top Israeli intelligence official will talk about ISIS in the Middle East.